The largest homeowner in the Twin Cities is a hedge fund you've probably never heard of. That hedge fund owns a company called Havenbrook that is on everyone's radar. Tenants, housing inspectors, even Minnesota's attorney general. But that's not the full story. The bigger picture is how the American dream of owning a home has become just another Wall Street commodity. Here's Tom Lydon of the Fox 9 Investigators. <laughs> Now it, it's a winter market, so the market is a little slower, so it's not as competitive, which is nice. Driving around North Minneapolis, realtor Lisa Carter doesn't mind the housing market cooling down just a bit. She specializes in first-time buyers, and in a hot market with multiple bids, her clients often get frozen out, in some cases losing out to investors paying cash. It was, it was brutal, and that's one of uh, my lease favorite parts of my job is telling the client that they didn't get the home. I just, it just, it makes me cringe. There's a lot to make you cringe about home buying these days. The Twin Cities region has one of the largest racial gaps for home ownership in the nation, especially in Minneapolis, where white home ownership is 77%, black home ownership only 25%, a 52 point spread. If owning a home is still part of the American dream, the opportunities are hardly the same. And I said, by the time you're 40, you should be in your own home. However, we won't discuss <laughs> my age, <laughs> but I've never lost focus of owning an own home. For Shanika Henderson, it's a dream on hold. She lives here on Girard Avenue North with her four kids and rents her home from a company called Havenbrook. This is the basement. I don't wash anymore down there because it's just, it's just not what's up. In the eight years she's lived here, she's watched the house slowly fall apart. There's a leaky basement. This is not a safe zone right here. This is Water damage. You can actually see the outside. Sagging floors and a stove that was leaking gas. And while Havenbrook promises 24 hour repairs, she says it rarely delivers. I guess you kind of have your good and bad, but I went with the bad for a very long time. All these headaches, plus utilities, for $1,600 a month. The only thing she can count on is rent going up, 50 bucks a year. Then she discovered she wasn't alone. Some stories are heart-wrenching. And um, what people have to endure just to have a home is horrible. In the Twin Cities Metro, Havenbrook owns more than 600 homes. But a third of its inventory, 199 homes, are located in North Minneapolis. City inspectors have documented nearly 1,600 violations in Havenbrook homes and received nearly 300 complaints. I can't afford to relocate. I grew up here and my kids go to school here. And Havenbrook renters are starting to share their stories and organizing. In Columbia Heights, the city revoked the rental licenses for 21 Havenbrook homes for code violations in two homes. And earlier this year, Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison filed a first of its kind lawsuit against the company, saying Havenbrook deceived and defrauded their tenants. Why does Havenbrook do this? Well, it's actually fairly simple. Systematically understaffing and under-resourcing the upkeep of their properties and leaving many tenants in homes that are uninhabitable is a deliberate strategy to maximize and extract profit from Minnesota families they rent to. But this isn't just another bad landlord story. Havenbrook and companies like it, who convert single family homes into rental units, represent a fundamental shift in how we think about housing, from a way for families to build generational wealth to a way for Wall Street to get rich. Data from the Minneapolis Federal Reserve shows the number of investor-owned single-family homes in the Twin Cities has doubled in the last 15 years, from 1.8 to 4 percent. But take a closer look at North Minneapolis, where Havenbrook and other out-of-town investors own as much as 16 to 24 percent of the homes, a quarter of the inventory, in some of the poorest census tracts in the city. I think it's a business model. Libby Starling is with the Fed. Where is the line between a business opportunity and a business model and something that makes us uncomfortable as a community? So it may be predatory in the way that capitalism is predatory. Yes, it's, it's, cap it's capitalism in action. 
and if it's legal. Yeah, and you know, I think their strategy was very clearly to target communities where foreclosure rates were highest, where homeowners were most vulnerable. And in the Twin Cities region, you know, North Minneapolis was the center of that foreclosure crisis. And they swooped up and, and took advantage of that, uh, you know, to make more money on, on these properties. Yona Freemark is a researcher who examined who owns the Twin Cities and found Havenbrook at the top of the list. To understand the rise of Havenbrook and companies like it, he says, you have to go back to the foreclosure crisis in 2007, when predatory lenders decimated North Minneapolis with not just risky loans, but criminal fraud, leaving thousands of homes on the north side underwater, empty and boarded up. Where most saw ruin, Wall Street saw opportunity. Havenbrook, based in Georgia, was one of several large investors that spent $36 billion gobbling up more than 200,000 homes nationwide. And they did it with government-backed, interest-only loans from Freddie Mac. It seemed like a good idea to move homes from being vacant to having someone owning them as a rental opportunity. That seemed like a positive. The challenge is when that begins to get out of whack and some of these owners aren't your neighbor down the street, but maybe the neighbor in the Virgin Islands. In fact, Havenbrook, the original buyer, is now just a shell company, bought in 2018 by Front Yard Residential, based in, you guessed it, the U.S. Virgin Islands. Front Yard was bought last year by a New York hedge fund called Predium Partners, which already owned 70,000 rental homes around the country under the name Progress Residential. Its founder and CEO is Don Mullen Jr., the guy behind the big short. Back in 2007, when he worked at Goldman Sachs, Mullen bet the housing bubble was about to burst and shorted the market. Now he's betting those who lost their homes will be forced to rent. In a pitch to investors uncovered as part of the Panama Papers, Mullen said the strategy is to capitalize on the severe distress in the residential real estate market in the United States renting homes to families who have been displaced by foreclosure or are otherwise unable to obtain financing despite being able to afford a home purchase. Frankly, it's harder to become a homeowner when there aren't enough homes available in the first place and when the homes that are available are being sought out by large investors who can pay a higher cost to be able to buy them in the first place and then hold on to them for a longer period of time. It also keeps families from the opportunity to build generational wealth. Consider Shanika Henderson's home. Havenbrook bought it in 2014 for 59000 a total steal. Today, it's worth 141000 a 140% increase. $82,000 in equity that could have gone to her children instead of going to a hedge fund. It saddens me that I could have done something like that. Now expand the frame. Havenbrook purchased 199 Northside homes for $18 million. Today, they're worth more than $30 million, a 64% increase. That's nearly $12 million in equity sucked out of neighborhoods that can least afford it. And that's not even counting the rent they take in. Minneapolis public housing alone has paid Havenbrook more than $6.5 million. In a statement, Predium told the Fox 9 investigators it can't comment on Front Yard's local investment strategies, but since acquiring the company last year, they've invested $65 million in renovations and maintenance, that's nationwide by the way, to significantly enhance the resident experience and have a positive impact on local communities. That'll be news to their renters, who are demanding a meeting with Havenbrook. On the north side, history and housing always go hand in hand from the legacy of housing covenants to the redlining by banks. In the 21st century, it's been predatory lending, followed by bottom-feeding investors. For those left out, it's just part of the pattern, a hijacking of the American dream. I think it takes away from the people who are trying to purchase homes, mainly first-time home buyers who are looking for affordable housing, because how do you compete with your offer with someone who can come in and pay, and pay cash and close quickly? I get it that they're a company and they're meant to make money and put as less as possible into the, the homes that they are renting, but it's, to me it's, it's, bull, it's BS. You know, you still need to take care of the people that feed you and your family as well. 
Now, there is a bill in the Minnesota legislature backed by the League of Minnesota Cities. It would impose an additional sales tax on investors who convert owner-occupied homes into rentals.